Hello lovely people, in today's video we're having a closer look at a retro frame build that Jake's been working on. He took a rusted Bianchi steel frame from my parents' back garden and turned it into a retro classic. So let's have a look what he did. So basically this is my dream bike. This is a bike that I always wanted to own when I first started cycling and it's a lot of me put into the bike. It took me months to fix up and build and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. So we found the bike back about a year and a half ago in your parents' back garden. And I picked it up and I thought, wow, that's a really cool looking bike. And thought maybe I could do something with it to make it into a winter bike or something like that. And it quickly realized that the bottom bracket was completely seized in there, like would not budge at all. So once I realized the BB was stuck in there, I tried heating it to get it to budge. I tried leaving GT85 on it overnight. I tried pretty much everything there was to try. And uh, I ended up taking it to the bike shop around the corner Paradigm Cycles and uh, left it with Charlie and just said, just go nuts. Like if you break the bike, you break the bike. Just see if you can get it out. And I think he spent two days and when he finally got it to move, the thread was actually immaculate. And then that was it. That was the build. Once I realised the bottom bracket was clean, I put an Instagram poll out to see um, whether I should restore it and have it as the original Celeste Bianchi colours or whether to keep it raw. Because when I started pulling away at some of the chip paint, it came out really shiny underneath. And everyone said, go chrome. So I, I went chrome. So step one, remove everything that was already on there. So I had to remove headset, bottom bracket, and try and just remove all the threads and or remove all the bolts and everything that could well be used again and see what could be salvaged. Turns out none of them, none of it could be salvaged. So it was a case of strip it all back. And then uh, I was always gonna do it. So I went to my friend Alex and we used um, an industrial paint stripper and that took everything off almost immediately. This stuff's so strong that you're wearing two pairs of gloves and it still goes through and burns your hands and we managed to get all of the paint off. Then once we cleaned the paint off, I then started at 400 grit sandpaper and I worked all the way to 2000 grit, which is basically just feels like normal paper. Um, and then I used a polish on it to see how it would come out. Um, the polish kind of dulled it a little bit. So what we decided to do was take it back again to a 1500 grit sand it down and make it look as nice as we could get it and then um, we used a clear coat lacquer sanding took about three weeks of about i would say about two and a half hours a day sanding because there's a lot of on bike frames and especially steel bikes there's a lot of really really tight corners and they're all really small tubes so getting into those areas just took forever and the paint stripper was good but it didn't get out all the little corners and stuff like that, which I kind of regretted 
once I started sanding, but once I'd started sanding, that was it. I was just doing that. From the start, I already knew like vaguely how I wanted it to look. Um, and I wanted it to have all modern components on it, but with sort of an old school style. Um, and then I started learning to use, you taught me actually how to use Illustrator. So I learned how to use Illustrator and I designed the decals. And then um, got my dad's company Motive to actually make the graphics for me. And uh, that was it. I was like, put them on the frame and it just looked amazing. So the first thing to go, yeah, bottom bracket, first issue, then the forks, second. What happened with the forks? Uh, they were broken. Then the down tube shifter, like where they were bolted on before, were like seized on, so that was another issue. Yeah, I got blisters all over my hands from sanding. I then had to learn to use Illustrator, which took ages. Um, the graphics came out amazing, but the graphics, I went there and did them um, at Motive and they took five attempts to get right. On the reassembly, uh, nearly cross-threaded the bottom bracket. The bottom bracket was a nightmare because of how it had ha actually broken out. It still had some dirt in the thread and new threads are really long compared to old threads, which were really short. So when I was doing it, it started biting and I could feel it was like getting too tight. So I had to undo it, then find a tap to go in. Um, which took a long time to find a tap that would fit an Italian thread of that size. What else went wrong? I mean, there was just so much. There was so much. It was a nightmare getting the paint to do the lacquer, but we had that properly done, like professionally clear coated over the top of the decal so they were really nice and smooth. Oh my God, do you remember putting the seat on? It took both of us, both our hands. It like, took both, it took both of ages. us, it took both of us about an hour. Yeah an hour to get the seat on because it's an it's an amazing bit of kit and such a cool little design but it's just such a pain in the ass which is why they don't make them like that but it does look amazing when it's on so it took me about a month and a half to get all of the bits together um, this is during coronavirus so everything was slowed down quite a lot anyway but it took me about a month and a half to get all the parts together and then it took me it, it took me a full a full day to actually build the bike. It's one of the nicest bikes to ride. It's just so unbelievably comfortable. And also because it's full Durace with carbon wheels and like everything on it is top spec. Everything works. It's super comfortable and it's not actually that heavy. Like you'd expect a bike like that to be like, I don't know, nine kilos, nine and a half, ten kilos, something like that. But I don't think that's anywhere, I don't think this is anywhere near that. This might be like seven and a half. Eight kilos. Yeah, which is so, pretty good. Which is pretty good. And you've decided to sell it. Why have you decided to sell it? I've decided to sell it because, I mean, I've done it now. I've done it. I've built it. I've ridden it a bit. And that I've was the coronavirus project. It was just my my fun was the build. Like I always wanted one, and I always wanted to build it. But now I've kind of done it and built it. I don't really, don't really deserve it. Like I don't ride it enough to warrant keeping it. So, yeah, I'll leave the eBay link in the description. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of sad, but definitely more time consuming than it was worth. But I got 
exactly what I wanted out of it and I'm really happy with the bike so. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more cycling content, and as always, keep risking it for a biscuit. Oh, and we have jerseys and t-shirts. The last few are on the web store, so link down below if you're interested in those. The 2020 designs are only gonna be up until the end of this month, so it's your last chance if you want any of these designs. All right, have a good day. Bye. Ooh.